Welcome to The Artist Matters. I'm Alex Rudy, and each week you will meet incredible artists from all walks of life. Filmmakers, writers, actors, painters, musicians, and so many more sharing their stories to motivate and inspire the creative in you. Whether you're doing it for fun or looking to make a living, this show will help you on your journey to bring out the artist within and letting the world know that your art matters. Hi everybody, it's Alex Rudy once again with The Artist Matters. Thanks for tuning in, as I like to say, and uh, hope you're enjoying the show, listening to these artists, giving them some love. I actually uh, went to my friend Rodini Almanasi, the graphic artist, to design business cards for The Artist Matters. Hey, if I'm going to feature the artist, I'm going to send some business their way. Might as well be me. So, uh, showed me the proof. It looks pretty good. Um, I'll get it up soon. He's doing the final proof right now and going to be sending me the cards soon and I'll put them up there so you can see what they look like. Well, everybody, welcome to May. And yes, it is officially two months since I launched The Artist Matters. Can you believe it? It's pretty wild. And, uh, I got a little discouraged, and I know I shouldn't be letting statistics rule my mind, but I was looking at them, uh, I think, exactly almost a week ago, and they were really low. I'm like, man, what's going on here? Why isn't it catching on? Man, I just don't... Yeah, a little part of me was thinking of, oh, is this worth it? And I know I should not let statistics uh, motivate me. It got to me, I'll admit and then what happens the next day? I had a, a big surge in listening. So just goes to show you uh, anything is possible. But thank you all for listening. I'm happy to share these artists' stories with you. And hopefully you show them love and listen to their music or read their books or check out their websites. Say hello to them. See what's going on. And maybe they can provide you with a little creative spark or just something you're interested in checking out. All right. Well, last week we interviewed Eric Herman, musician, composer, the guy who did the music for my movie, The Park. And as promised, he's back. First time I'm ever having a return guest. Granted, it's a week after his solo episode aired, but I figured it'd just be perfect room to introduce the next guest because they are in a band together called Slow Apollo. And the band consists of his brother, Tyler Herman, on drums, his father, Eric Sr., on bass. Also on lead guitar is Robert Holden, while Eric himself is on rhythm guitar and vocals. And you'll hear Eric here and there. He'll come in more at the end when uh, we introduce the whole slow Apollo Genesis, but we're going to focus most of this episode on lead vocalist of the band, Joram Rubik. Joram hails from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He is the eldest of five children, four boys, one girl, raised in a strict fundamentalist Christian household, wasn't allowed to listen to secular music, but his parents did love music. And, uh, His grandfather played guitar, and so did his uncle. So maybe there was a little destiny that he would uh, get involved in music somehow. So at the age of 12, he was uh, given his first acoustic guitar for Christmas. Had a little trouble learning to play it, but he found a friend who played bass, and they formed their own little band, if you want. Uh, He had to move to San Jose, California when he was 16, back in 2001 and over there he learned to play guitar because he had a knee injury so there wasn't much else for him to do so he he self-taught himself way before YouTube was around but then as he got older he was able to branch out because he finally got his own car and once in the car he could listen to any radio station he wanted 
So all that secular music started pouring in from Pink Floyd to Led Zeppelin and so much more. And he finally saw, oh, so this is some of this stuff. So he's uh, been catching up with it ever since. Coming back to Louisiana in 2006, he went to Southeastern Louisiana University, got a degree in mass communications, emphasis on journalism, but he wasn't liking the idea of having to go out in the middle of a storm to do reporting. (laughs) Can't say as I blame him. He's done some office work, but he quickly realized that he had much more passion for music. So he was doing it solo, but he was thinking to himself, you know, maybe now it's time to start a band. So he actually put an ad in Craigslist and uh, found some bandmates to start off, but they were just jamming. It wasn't really going anywhere. Finally, he crossed paths with Eric, who was looking to try something new musically himself, bringing along his brother Tyler. And they started to gel. They really started to understand each other and figure out what they wanted to do musically. Obviously, it's rock. (laughs) And uh, not too long after, they needed a bassist, so where else could they go but in the family? And Eric's father came along and joined the band, and they found uh, one of their friends, Robert Holden, to become lead guitar, and thus, Slow Apollo was born. And uh, they got some pretty catchy music. You can hear some of their stuff. I'll give you links to that and their website after we hear the interview. It's a pretty good one. And you learn a lot more about what it takes to be in a band, how they decide on which songs to write, how they collaborate, what's the process they go through, where they rehearse. And it's really good chat. And I think you'll like it, especially if you're a music fan. This one's for you. So without further ado, here is my interview with Jorm Rubik and Eric Herman. All right, we are here with Eric and Joram. Welcome, guys. Hey, how you doing? Thanks for having us. Yes, we have our first returning guest. Eric, how does it feel to be back? <laughs> in one <laughs> form or another. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm glad we get to keep in touch. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes, as you just heard on last week's episode, he, uh, or we played him when he was the composer for the park. Now, he's with his bandmate, Jorm Rubik. I feel I have to say it that way, Joram Rubik. <laughs> it just needs that it, dignity. <laughs> it makes it sound better, that's for sure. Well, of course, you know, you gotta, gotta give you some boost. So most of this will be with Joram, folks, at the beginning, because we heard Eric's story in the last podcast, but we'll bring in Eric. And if he needs to chime in, you're more than welcome to. Of course. Um, yes, yeah, so we'll get into this right now with Joram. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> All right. Did you always have this creative spark in you? Uh, yeah, I did, actually. I mean, it's funny because I was homeschooled as a, a, a little kid, and I have memories as early as, um, I guess I would say, kindergarten and first grade. Uh, my mom started homeschooling me when I was in second grade, and by that time, she had had enough because I was drawing in the margins of my school book. I had such a short attention span that I would rather draw and create and do that sort of thing. So even as a little kid, um, I was when I was distracted, it wasn't just I was carried off by any this random thought. It was I just wanted to draw. I wanted to, to create and, and do things. And so as a little kid, that was that's always been with me ever since as long as I can remember. Uh, and a fellow drawing artist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've been drawing since I was far back as I can remember. So it was drawing, coloring, all that fun stuff. Did you have a certain thing you liked to draw? Uh, well, as a kid, I, it was more, it was probably superheroes <laughs> and Disney characters, you know, stuff that was, uh, like I, I told you before, I was it was very strict upbringing for me so there were certain things my parents did expose us to and that was mostly (laughs) g-rated disney movies and things like that so you know i would draw lion king and aladdin and all those those types of things and of course doodling and just coming up with my own uh sketches you know in the meantime but it, it wasn't anything that really stuck out um i was heavily influenced by my dad who was the kind of guy who can draw something 
uh, from the top of his head and it looked photorealistic. So having that sort of inspiration, you know, especially a guy who never pursued that talent, it was something he did on his own in his spare time and years went by and I found, you know, um, notebooks of drawings of sketchbooks of sketches he did in the early 80s and late 70s he just did for fun and it just was like my gosh I wish I had just a fraction of that talent and so I think having that definitely um, inspired me so there wasn't really one thing although I think having my dad in my life definitely probably pushed me in that direction so a strict fundamentalist Christian upbringing what is that exactly like Oh, man, I don't really know how to explain it um, other than it's 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 something if you're conditioned to accept it, it's not strange until later on when you start to see the outside world more and more often. Um, so I think for somebody who's never been exposed to it, it sounds probably horrifying. But if you're somebody who grew up in it and then kind of in some ways has an appreciation for it, which I, I'm probably in the minority of the people who grew up in a fundamentalist home and, you know, broke away from the faith, so to speak, but also look back on it fondly. I'm probably in the minority um, because there's not very many people that I've come across with a similar background that speak as favorably about, you know, Christianity and and the things that I was raised with. Um, But there were definitely disadvantages. And I think when it comes to the exposure of music, for example, Um, One thing that was very uh, forefront in our family was the fact that there was secular music and then there was Christian music. And secular music was the music that was of the world, that was not sanctioned by the church or, you know, the people that you really um, trusted their interpretations of what the Bible said, for example. So in that regard, there were certain things that I wasn't exposed to. Um, but I'm very thankful that my dad comes from a more visually artistic background and my mom comes from a family of musicians. So even though I grew up in a very strict fundamentalist household, they both were able to expose me to rich talent that thankfully the upbringing didn't subdue so much that I was, you know, I'm like, uh, one of these people that are essentially, um, what is it, uh, a sovereign citizen? You know, somebody that goes like so far beyond because of their upbringing. I think I'm probably more mellowed out in that regard. But it's it's kind of hard to explain in like one little encapsulated soundbite. And you have other siblings? Oh, yeah. I'm one of five. One five. I'm the eldest, yeah. So your dad had this creative side with drawing. Your mom was musically inclined. Any of your siblings in the creative uh, arts? Yeah, actually, uh, all of my brothers have a strong appreciation for visual arts and then, you know, music. Um, my the brother, I'm the eldest, the second born, he plays guitar, or as I think Eric and I would probably say, we know how to play certain things on guitar, um, as maybe we'll get into later the difference between knowing music theory and the guitar and knowing certain songs to play on the guitar is two different, mm. <laughs> two different worlds, you know? Um, but at my younger brothers, uh, they do draw, they don't play instruments, but I do have one brother, Josiah in particular, who's, he took more after my dad than any of us. And he's also somebody that can draw things, that are photorealistic. He's and very good. He's, his mind sees things in ways I wish I could. Mm-hmm. And then my little sister, she's um, she's 16 now, and I'm 34, so I should give you, show you how far apart we are. Yeah, wow. and, um, and she plays in band at school and is very bright. What does she play? But, uh, she played, she's played, uh, the, well, I think right now she's playing the flute, but I think prior to that it was the clarinet I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they typically switch flute and clarinet. No, oh, is it? That's mm-hmm. not true. Okay, if you good. play one, you can typically play the other. Yeah. That's, uh, I knew that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think this weekend she actually went to Dallas for a competition with her uh, band. So, did yeah, I think um, we're all pretty lucky. Did your faith influence your creativity in any way? Uh, yeah, I think so.